Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Today we're going to be talking about Nintendo Switch 2 yet again because we have a brand new report coming from Vandal. Now, Vandal is an international outlet and has nothing to do here with the U.S., but they had a podcast episode where they had on the CEO of a prominent manufacturing company of Nintendo Switch accessories. And if you guys don't know, we've been getting some leaks from manufacturing accessory makers uh, in general over the last couple of weeks, but today's ends up being really fascinating because one this is the guy at the top of the food chain and there's some very interesting things being said here such as they happen to know the release timing of the system now why would a third-party manufacturer of accessories know when the release timing is well because they have to have their products ready to release uh they've also apparently gone hands-on with a near final unit and there's some really cool stuff in here including a massive change to the control sticks uh whoa what are we talking about? Well, we got to go ahead and dive right in after I remind you that, hey, we're on a road to 150,000 subscribers. If you want to stay as up to date on Switch 2 as you can, whether it's rumors, leaks, or when Nintendo officially announces it and we get into the games and everything else, folks, all you got to do is subscribe right here at Nintendo Prime. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, this has been uh, Google Translator here. This is exclusive. Nintendo Switch 2 is now ready in the launch window, Joy-Con news, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, this comes from a podcast episode. I listened to it, but again, it's in a foreign language, so a little bit hard for me because I only speak English and understand English. But uh, they put up most of the details here in their actual article. So it says, at Vandal, we have been talking to you for a long time about the successor of Nintendo Switch for now known as Nintendo Switch 2, bringing to this website both official information and rumors and exclusive information we've been able to access during these months. Today, we bring you news about Nintendo's new console in the latest program of Vandal Radio, our weekly podcast that our colleague Ruben Mercado, CEO of the video game accessories and peripherals company Blade, has stopped by, who has new exclusive information about Switch 2, and who also talks to us about what fits or doesn't fit with him from the latest leaks, according to the information he has about the console, since he is currently manufacturing accessories for it. That's right. They are making parts for it right now. Like, this accessory manufacturer is literally making accessories for it right now. So what does that tell you? One, the system must be in mass production because if they're already going into mass production and manufacturing for third-party accessories, well, then the system itself must be in mass manufacturing. Also, the system must be coming out fairly soon, right? Well, let's get into it. So, a March or April release and new features for the analog Joy-Cons. In his appearance on Vandal Radio, and there's a link to listen to the program right below, and we'll put a link as well down below if you happen to be a native speaker, Ruben tells us that the console is done. We have already had access to practically final consoles it is ready on the other hand the launch date would take place around march or april now why is it march or april well it's something that coincides with obviously several market analysts but here's what it, here's what he said it is speculated that depending on this year's figures he's talking about sales figures it will be launched at the end of this fiscal year which is at the end of march and if the figures go well it will be launching at the beginning of the next fiscal year which is in april it all depends on that so essentially when it comes to the launch timing nintendo's considering march or april and they haven't decided which one it's going to be at this time because they want to see basically how holiday sales do like if they're on target to hit their 13 and a half million sales projection they will just wait and release the system in April. But uh, if they're not on target, they may just go ahead and say, you know what, let's put this thing out in March and just get the shindig rolling. Either way, March or April is fine in my book. This just matters for Nintendo's fiscal calendar. Uh, and I also believe, hey, if they do it in April, it actually makes a lot of sense. You launch it in April, plus you get the holiday, you get like a double sellout period during your first year. I think that's actually a really, really smart move. But let's go ahead and get back into this because again, that's only one piece of this puzzle and it's an important piece. We all wanna know when the system is coming out. He's saying he has this you know, from direct knowledge and conversations with Nintendo, but let's get into this here. As we go down here, it says we don't have any information on the technical specifications, which of course a third-party accessory manufacturer probably wouldn't because they're just worried about making like controllers and stuff. But Ruben can tell us about the Joy-Cons, confirming that yes, they are indeed magnetic, which is something that we you know have, have kind of figured at this point, but you know, it's nice to have some reconfirmation. And then they do have some sort of locking system as well. So it's not just magnets, there is a locking system, and they do remain firmly attached to the console, which Whew, that is a relief because 
Joy-Con waggle was a thing. The rail system wasn't perfect. It got the job done. Uh, we've already seen that there might be like a press in fit, but combining that with magnets and a locking system, I think uh, you just combine the best of both worlds and end up with a very solid connection. Now, there's some interesting stuff here because the design of the Joy-Con would not be exactly as we are used to and as they appear in the renders. Since they have been told one of their most requested products, and this is something they've sold a lot of, the protectors for analog sticks. You know those covers that you put on your analog sticks, people like to protect their sticks so they don't wear out so much, will not be able to be manufactured on this occasion. And this is a quote from him, when you see the presentation, you will understand. So they assure Ruben, so everything indicates the analog sticks of the new Switch may be very different. And here, many possibilities can open up, such as opting for flat analog sticks, more integrated into the controller to prevent dust from entering. You could think of that maybe something like the 3DS sliders, you know. Uh, Steam controller style track pads, which, I mean, that, that'd be quite interesting or other surprises that Nintendo could prepare. Uh, and look, uh, there's on Steam Deck controllers, um, they have a little bit of a capacitive touch to them. And that capacitive touch enables motion controls just by putting your thumb fully over the, the control stick. Nintendo could have something like that where there's some sort of thumbstick motion activity in certain games, but there are capacitive touch, you know, compatible thumbstick covers. So, uh, to me, that doesn't really seem like the likely thing. We also saw this old patent, if you remember, about the uh, control stick that kind of like you could move it around, of course, but it also had tilt functionality. And maybe the tilt functionality is there and present. And if you put a cover on it, it affects the friction of that and it doesn't work properly. So maybe that's why Nintendo's saying you can't make these or at least can't make them at launch, someone's going to attempt to make them, right? Well, at least without taking away some functionality. Uh, I'm, I'm very fascinated in all of this. And again, that was a patent that's already public, so I presume that that exact methodology got scrapped. But I, I'm just very curious. And yeah, we'll be speculating a lot on this on the podcast next week when we get the crew back together. And man, it seems like we're going to have a lot to talk about when it comes to this because the ideas for what Nintendo and how Nintendo could be evolving the thumbstick are kind of wild, man, especially in ways where we're talking about how you can't necessarily put on a thumb protector, a thumbstick protector. That's interesting. Uh, let's get back to the article. So uh, as you see here, you know, it, it talks about preventing dust from entering as a possibility. They're just throwing out ideas here. They don't really know. Uh, I'm assuming that Ruben probably does since he's touched a near final unit. Uh, but, you know, the rest of people uh, don't know. And he said, obviously, we'll, it'll make all sense to us once they reveal the thing, uh, but a worldwide launch with many units to avoid speculation. So uh, I think they meant to avoid scalping in this case. Uh, Ruben also clarifies, Nintendo is very clear that it will do a simultaneous worldwide launch. So they're not gonna do a slow rollout to different regions. Uh, so same date for everyone worldwide. And that it wants to supply enough consoles to all the territories in which it is launched to be able to supply all that demand and thus end a bit of the speculation that has been characterizing the launch of the latest consoles. Uh, that obviously means like what Furukawa said earlier this year is true. Nintendo's entire way to combat scalping is ample supply. If you have ample supply, scalping ends up not mattering. Yeah, still will be sold out day one. But then if three days later, you got a bunch more coming. Three days after that, a bunch more coming. Every three days, you have major restocks or at least once a week. Uh, that could help make scalping less effective. So uh, that's really good news. That does mean Nintendo is likely supplying... Uh, or at least planning to supply more units for the launch of this system than the, they did for Switch, bare minimum, right? Switch, obviously, they didn't supply enough, uh, and here they're going to be supplying even more. That means Nintendo's anticipating the demand for the Switch 2 to be quite large, which, hey, that's not surprising. You're right, let's get back to the information. Now, finally, there is no information available regarding prices, um, although it could be between uh, 400 and 500 euros. It says it'll be higher than the Switch, but lower than the current generation console. And I guess uh, in listening through the show, it sounds more like they were essentially told by Nintendo that while they're not going to give them the exact price, that it will be more expensive than current Switches, but less expensive than competing uh, you know other platforms out there i believe playstation 5 in particular was mentioned and if that's the case well the cheapest model of ps5 is 450 dollars us right now for the all digital model obviously the most expensive nintendo switch is the 350 dollars switch oled so you can kind of go smack dab in the middle and go okay it does sound like that 399.99 price point seems like a pretty safe bet for 
this particular system. So, and now Nintendo could have multiple models. They could have models with more storage and remove, you know, physical media and a whole bunch of stuff they could do. But I do think Nintendo, especially if they're trying to provide enough stock, you know, day one to try to combat scalping, it's still going to sell out, uh, is probably going to be sticking to one SKU because if you just make one SKU, you can make more of those faster than having multiple SKUs. So yeah, I think Nintendo obviously knows what they're doing. So what are like the exciting parts we learned for this one? Nintendo's apparently doing something innovative with the system and it might be subtle and it might not be used in every system. Like I think if they're doing something crazy with the joysticks, like I grab my current plane, these are kind of standard joysticks, just a little shorter. Um, I kind of think that like if Nintendo's doing anything with the joysticks to bring them uh, new functionality, it's not going to be something that takes away old functionality. So if you have a, like a, a controller with your normal control sticks like this, like you could still use it like normal control sticks. So whatever they're doing, I don't think it's going to take away them just functioning like normal control sticks, but being able to add something new, whether it's some sort of capacitive touch, and if it's not capacitive, maybe they're a little bit fatter. So like maybe there's actually a bit of a touch area, like kind of like a touch screen of sorts, but it's not really a screen, more like a touch pad uh, where, yeah, you're not going to put, you know, when, when you get like the PlayStation controllers where they have the touch pad area, you don't put a cover on the touch pad, right? So if it's not, a, if it's a more of a touch paddy area where you can move your thumb on it a little bit to move like a mouse cursor or just to get, you know, maybe more fine tuned uh, aiming and stuff like that. Uh, I can see that being something, well, hey, it's an option. Some games will use it some games won't and it's sort of innovative that to me i think is maybe where we go where we get slightly bigger thumbsticks that are able to have a bit more fine-tuned sort of motion controlly type stuff uh i i do think that that's possible and it just will be different than the way steam deck does it where they're just enabling some gyroscopes so uh that, that's what i think is going to happen and that would be innovative while not removing functionality and having lots of games that can just plain old ignore it so uh to me that's really cool and that's a that, that, that's a very Nintendo thing to do. Take something that is still like modern and standard, keep those modern standards, but add some optional extra functionality to it. Uh, I'm all about that. I think that's a very clever way to throw some innovation in the system without breaking the core of, of what makes the system appealing in the first place, right? So you add that additional stuff, sort of like with HD Rumble, but then you know it's not forced upon everyone and it doesn't feel like this you know gimmick that you like have to use. Uh, I'm cool with that. You know, I'm, I'm very, very cool with that. And it kind of crosses between offering touch pads and control sticks by sort of putting them in one device. Again, this is just my guess and my speculation. But to me, it's an exciting guess and exciting speculation that I would gladly take, especially if, like, when you do it, it could, it could be like a nub. Like, you know those Lenovo laptops that had the little nub? Imagine that maybe it functions a little bit like that for, like, you know, sort of more fine-tuned control. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I think it's a really neat idea if it's something Nintendo is, is at least thinking about doing. That being said, the price point, the release timing. Oh, yeah, baby! $399? $399.99, I'll take that. April or March? I'll take that. Those are all big Ws in my book. That also tells me that if this guy does know what he's talking about and this information did come from Nintendo, it's got to get revealed in October, right? Nintendo, would Nintendo dare to wait till January to f reveal, not fully, not do like a full blowout, but to reveal a system that's releasing in March or April, would Nintendo dare wait until January? Would they? I mean, they could. They could do the shortest announcement to release of all time, but I kind of feel like October... We got to feel pretty confident about October, right? And by the way, there's three total weeks in October they could announce it. It could be week one, week two, not week three, because that's when Jamboree comes out, or week four. So there's like three weeks in October they could end up announcing this thing. Oh, man, I'm just, I, you could argue five, because like Halloween happens on like a Thursday, so they could actually extend that into a fifth week. So I'm just going out on a limb here and saying, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, October seems pretty likely. I might even have to put a bet on it again. We got to wait for April to end, though, because I have a hot chip bet right now that's not looking too hot for April. I don't know what the hell I could bet for October. Maybe I bet a giveaway or something. Like, if I lose, I have to give something away. But is that as entertaining as a little bit of mouth torture? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see.
Uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think about the Switch Shoe and all this stuff down below. Obviously, you know we'll be talking about this and anything else that happens to Switch Shoe on our upcoming podcast. Also, our podcast coming up on uh, next week, Wednesday, we're going to be doing a pseudo-conversational review of Echoes of Wisdom. It'll be the final topic in the show. So if you don't, you know, if you want to avoid spoilers at that time, you can obviously skip that topic because it's going to be probably pretty spoiler heavy because we're going to be discussing our honest thoughts on, you know, m the complete package uh, and, and, and trying to present to you guys a uh, thorough conversational review. I think that's the way I want to handle a lot of Nintendo's biggest games is do a thorough conversational review through our podcast that will get, then get posted as its own segment over on our podcast clips channel. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am the Thunder RoboJets from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch each and every one of you guys in my next video.